round flow. Awesome. Nice job. Thank you. Nice job. That is a beautiful yes. ram. Hey, how about that? Thanks. Hey, how about Lift a Hunt with Cody Robbins. Hi, I'm Cody Robbins. Welcome to this week's episode of Live to Hunt. Every year, all of us hardcore hunters apply for the big game draws, the hunter's lottery, hoping to get our names pulled from the hat for one of those coveted tags. This week, I'm here to introduce to you the luckiest lady I know when it comes to yanking those fancy tags. To introduce to you the luckiest lady I know, we're headed to the Gem State to meet Mrs. Tammy Coleman. In 2007, Tammy drew one of the most coveted tags you could imagine for Shiris Moose. Again, in 2008, she drew the rarest tag in Idaho. I'm Tammy Coleman, I'm from Lewiston, Idaho, and I drew a permit for Unit 11 here in Idaho for the bighorn sheep. It's um, in this unit, they only draw two persons for the permit and it's odds are about 300 people put in for the permit and only two are drawn. We checked on the computer and the words congratulations eventually show, I finally read them at the bottom of the page there and I know we were all excited jumping around. I think we even shed a few tears of excitement. We were, <laughs> it was amazing because she had just drawn last year for Shiras Moose so we had no idea or couldn't even believe that she would draw again another coveted tag like this so it was pretty special really. The instant Doug and Tammy spread the word on drawing this once in a lifetime tag, Tammy's friends and family were spread throughout the mountainside, helping her locate the biggest rams in the country. After a hard month of scouting, Tammy and the crew found multiple bands of rams. They found two rams in particular that they felt would qualify for the Boone and Crockett record book. I drove down to Idaho to meet the crew for opening day of the season. We were going to be hunting the sheep by boat in the famous valley of Hell's Canyon. Check out the name of our yacht. Round fly. Awesome. Comes the captain. Glenn and Earl Landris are two of Coleman's very good friends that were helping out on the hunt. After flipping through a few of their albums, it was easy to see that these guys were sheep hunting fools. And it was obvious they were very good at what they do. There's no question, having the Landris boys along with all the other friends and family to help out, this hunt was bound to be a success. Jerome Cutts spotted one of the two Boone and Crockett rams the evening before the season opened. Him and a couple others put these rams to bed in hopes they'd be easy to find the next morning. Big Buck Magazine, Canada's top deer hunting publication. Hi, welcome to this week's Where Legends Roam segment. I'm Bill Longman. Today we're gonna to take you on a journey through the life of a classic white-tailed deer. This is the story of the brow tine buck. Where Legends Roam is proudly presented to you by Big Buck Magazine, Canada's top deer hunting publication. It seems over the years in every hunting publication, I've read about a brow tine buck. 
Well, here's another one, and he was a great deer. Gary Donald from Big Buck Magazine and I spotted this deer as a three-year-old in 2002, but we never got any decent footage of him. In 2003, as a 140-inch four-year-old, he became a regular at Gary's Blinds. We picked up his sheds from that year and wondered if he'd continue to improve. In 2004, he showed up again and had grown considerably. His impressive brow tines and chocolate antlers were something to behold. We picked up his sheds the next spring and they scored 164 inches. In 2005, he was now a boss buck that roamed with the likes of heavy duty. We found his right antler and it went 75 inches and he would have been over 166 inches. In 2006, the seven-year-old buck strolled in again, but he'd definitely gone downhill, all except his wicked brow tines. He was taken that year by a lucky hunter. Gary and I both feel very lucky to have watched this great buck for so long in a land where legends roam. If you'd like to hear more of these stories on these fantastic white-tailed mule deer bucks, be sure to pick up Where Legends Roam, Volume 1 and 2. Now let's get back to the show. I saw these ones that were about, they were probably about three quarters of a mile away. Yeah. They were and on the move. If you could explain them in like three or four words, what would you say? Beautiful. One word, beautiful. I mean, he was, there was, I thought there was three of them. It turns out there's two of them that are decent. One's kind of broomed off, so he's a little short, but the other one's just amazing. <laughs> you got to look at him yeah. yesterday, right? Oh, yeah. Good What'd you think? Well, Good ramp. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Are you excited for town? Oh yeah. Have been since I heard she drew the permit. I don't want to scare you, Cody, but this is what's left of the last Canadian I took up. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> We're hoping his left leg shows up. <laughs> All right, life vests are under this side. We'll just try and keep it balanced, and we should be up there in about 20 minutes. You ready? Tammy really wanted to get her ram with muzzleloader, but as rare as the tag was, she decided to bring her old faithful 270 along just in case. Earl's just explained to Tammy and Doug where they saw the ram last night. Jerome and Matt and a couple of the other guys spotted these rams. There's like seven or eight of them. Right up just over these ridges right here. But they were actually moving at dark. So we're gonna make our way up there and we're gonna try and find him and try and get on him and get Tammy a good shot with her muzzle over. Idaho souvenir for you there, Cody. If you take back to Canada, you get to... Cool. He has one, two, three, he had five buttons, or yeah. rattles and a button. So the only time I want to hear that today is when you're shaking your head. I'm going to put it in your pocket. <laughs> it's for you, buddy. Then I might get it mixed up with the real thing, Doug. I don't think that's a good idea. I'll save it for the bowl for you. Oh, hey, Doug. Did you break your nose? Oh. <laughs> Later on that afternoon, we finally bumped into the band of rams that Jerome had spotted the evening before. 
they had traveled almost four miles upriver. Tammy, can you see them? Yep. What's your first impression? That first one looks really nice. Yeah? Yep. It's nice to see so many rams together too, but yeah, that first one looks nice. But they're waiting the heck up there. I know. <laughs> and they're moving. They're on the move. But guess what? What? Your pack will feel like it has feathers in it when you're going after a ram like oh, that. Oh yeah, I'm not worried about that really. Hopefully when you're coming down, it feels like it has rocks in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Showtime. It was now time to climb the mountain and go after the ram that Tammy had been waiting for. But there was one problem. We didn't see the ram's bed down. They fed around the hillside out of sight, so we were headed up there blind, hoping to bump into them and spot them before they spotted us. We bumped right into the band of rams face to face. The lead ram, the one Tammy was after, had already fled the scene. The only thing we got on film was his six compadres following close behind. Little did I know at the time, this would be the last band of rams I would lay eyes on before having to head home to Saskatchewan for the archery mule deer season. Hey guys, welcome to Shed Hunters. I'm your host, Kelsey Claypool. This week we're featuring a set of mule deer sheds off of a buck we call Dandy. Shed Hunters with Kelsey Claypool is brought to you by An Adventure Creations, portraying your passion in solid gold. Our good friends Bill Longman and Gary Donald found this set of shed. A year later, a lucky hunter by the name of Bob McDonald harvested this buck. And if you guys can imagine, he had even more mass when he shot him than he does in this set of sheds. Now it's up to you guys, the viewers at home, to go to livetohunt.com and submit your best guess to Dandy's total inches of antler using the Boone and Crockett scoring system. I'm going to give you guys two hints this week. Dandy's estimated inside spread is 29 inches and his largest circumference measures over 7 inches. You guys got to do the rest. Good luck. Go to livetohunt.com and submit your best guess. Two weeks later, Glenn and Earl picked up Tammy and headed back to Hell's Canyon to try and find that same band of rams. And they did. Well, we're climbing up here. Earl spotted seven rams at daylight this morning. So we've crossed the canyon and we left Mike up on a vista to the glass from and so we're climbing up this steep grassy chute right here. That should put us pretty close to shooting range when we top out up here. It's supposed to be about 90 this afternoon. It's got to be at least 110 right now. It must be going to cool off. But we're going to see if we can. This is the same band of ramps we chased two weeks ago. And there's two, two nice ones in here so we'll close the gap and uh, see what we can do. Where's the shooter? There she is. When the sheep came into view, it was easy to see that the lead ram was on to them. At this point, getting closer wasn't an option. Earl ranged them at 302 yards. Tammy had no choice but to switch to her rifle. I think that other ram's laying behind him. We don't want to kill two of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's the longer one. Yep, right in the shoulder now. Over him. Shoot, aim a little low. Here, you don't have to push the button. Which one is he, man? Right, yeah, right on his shoulder now. Right now. Every time you're steady. Low that time. Jacket hard. There. Now you're gonna get him on the run. Once the rams had gone around the corner of the hill after Tammy's shots, Earl and Glenn knew they had to get up high to try and keep a visual on them. When they crossed the sheep's tracks, Earl actually found blood. Tammy had hit the ram with one of her first shots. They bumped into the other six rams, but there was no sign of the big one. Suddenly, Tammy spotted him directly below them. Put it right behind his shoulder. Right where you want. Stop. There you go. Right behind him. You got him next one. He's a, he's a goner now. He's going down. Yeah, don't just wait on him. Just wait on him. How about that? Woo! Uh, right here. Ah! <laughs> finally! <laughs> I gotta give you a hug. Yeah. Nice job. Thank you. Nice job. You're that better. is a beautiful yes. ram. Hey, how about that? Thanks. Hey, Will, how about, there's a ram right there. Oh, yeah. nonchalant. Yeah, is that him laying there? Come on. Girl, well, that I know, it's like, ah! Standing there looking at him. Oh, there's man. one right there. It's like, I don't know if it was that one or it was one of the is group. Is that him laying there? I'm like, I think so. Woo! <laughs> I can't imagine how excited Earl and Glenn and Tammy were to put their hands on that ram for the first time. But before they could, they had a really tough climb to get down to him. <laughs> Horse around, see if I can get him up. Boy, oh. them horns are pretty. Aren't they? They're pretty color. Yeah. Heavy. Ram. Yeah. You see that? Look That's that. awesome. That's what we wanted. Yeah. Well, Tammy, this is one awesome ram. Yep. It's a great. of a lifetime. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Your uh, second Boone and Crockett animal in about 350 days. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I can't think of a better reason to uh, live to hunt than this ram right here. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Just awesome sheep. Yep. So Great shooting. He's down. He's yours. Let's get him Let's out Let's get here. him home. Yeah, we, sun's going to go down behind the mountain. Yeah. It's been hot today, but. It's very hot. It's going to cool down and get dark fast here. Carrying a Boone and Crockett Rocky Mountain Bighorn sheep off the mountain, like Mike Coleman is doing right now, is an honor and a rare privilege that the vast majority of us hunters will never have the opportunity to do. I'm sure everybody on the crew would agree that the only way Tammy's hunt could have been any better is if we all could have been there peering over her shoulder when she was getting ready to take the shot. But I guess that's why some of us carry cameras, to share those special moments in the wild with all of our friends. It's too bad we all can't draw tags as rare as Tammy's, but I guess that's what makes them so special. I'm sure if we're patient, all of our turns will come around at one point or another. And that's our show for this week. The previews of next week's show are coming right up. Thanks for watching. Live to Hunt with Cody Robbins was brought to you by 10 Point Crossbow Technologies. There is no substitute. 
To order Live to Hunt gear, DVDs, and other merchandise, go to livetohunt.com. Next week, we're headed out with my very best pal, Shane Hunter, on an archery mule deer hunt in my home province of Saskatchewan. This show is jam-packed full of mule deer footage closer than you've ever imagined.